Hi there, my name is Justin. I'm a mechanic here for eBikes BC. We're going to do a installation of a front hub motor on this particular bike here. This one is with the disc brake, so we're going to just do a quick run through of how that's going to go. First thing we're going to do, we're going to have to remove the front wheel. We're going to have to do a tire swap, and this particular model comes with a front disc brake, so we're going to have to swap over the rotor as well. This is a six bolt pattern rotor. They come in two different styles, a center lock and a six bolt uh, pattern. For the e-bike BC kits, you will need a six bolt pattern uh, disc rotor. Um, so if you do not have the uh, compatible uh, rotor, you'll have to purchase one after the fact. Okay, so we're just going to go real quick here on how to uh, go about doing that. Of course, you're going to have to remove the skewer. And then we'll just go through uh, pulling off this rotor. So for the final uh, step of the wheel prep here, with our old wheel, we're going to remove the rim tape. That's covering all the valve holes here and such. Now this rim tape should be able to swap over to the e-bike BC wheel. Um, if for whatever reason yours is worn out or old or used, you can get um, wheel, strip, uh, wheel tape strips. Um, and also a viable option is electrician's tape. Purchase that at your uh, hardware store. Um, two laps of that around the wheel would do perfect. So, going into our e bike kit, we have our electronic parts, controller, and such, and then we have our wheel. The wheel does not come with the rim strip. With the rim strip, we're going to have to do the install of that. Um, this particular model, we're going to have to install the disc brake. It comes with uh, a shorter set of bolts than what was provided on the original wheel. We're going to have to use these particular bolts as to not um, hamper with the internals of the hub. So this particular model and all hub models are going to come with this uh, little plastic spacer. This is to be removed and then we're going to install the disc in place of the spacer. And again, using the bolts that come with the hub. Okay. Again, for the non-disc uh, for the non-disc bikes that are going to be using the same kit, uh, you always want to remember that the disc brake side attachment is on your left hand side. So there will be a small arrow on the hub, I don't know if you can see in the shot here, um, it will be pointing the direction. Again, if this is uh, on the left side, if you're facing forward on the bike. Again, we'll take the direction of the tire, point it in the right direction, and we'll just do a quick tire install here. All right. Cool. Okay. So we are removing the bolts for the disc brake. And this is just a plastic cover to hold the bolts in place and this is to be removed before installing the rotor. Again, this is just in place in case of uh, there is a not a disc brake on this particular model. We're going to leave the bolts and the plastic piece installed. But when installing the rotor, we remove this, dispose of it, and then we install the rotor. Again, keeping paying attention to the rotation of the, uh, of the rotor. Okay.
We're also going to take a quick look at the spacing in between the, uh, the hub and then on the axle. There's a series of washers. There are two washers. There's going to be the outer washer that goes in between the outside of the fork and in between the locking nut. There is also this lock washer that you cannot spin. It does not spin freely on the axle. It is locked in place. If we take a close look here, we can see that there is a locking mechanism that is supposed to fit in the bottom of the dropout. So what's going to happen is the wheel, um, once we have it in the right direction, we're going to take a quick peek at the cable routing for the electronics. There is a notch on the axle that allows the cable to be pushed at a 90 degree angle. Now we want this so to be on the very top as if it was going up the, the length of the fork so that the locking washers that don't spin freely on this axle will be on the inside. So these are to go in between the hub and the inside of the dropout. Again, locking washers facing down so that they sit properly and these are going to prevent the wheel from spinning, uh, the axle from spinning freely in the, uh, in the dropouts when the hub is uh, ex exuding power. Alright, so we have ins properly installed our rotor, we have torqued the bolts down, we have removed the plastic piece that was covering the uh, spot where the rotor goes, we have made sure that the washers are in their proper correct uh, placement, the locking washers that do not rotate on the axles will be on the inside of the fork. So the next step is going to be just do the quick install. Alright, so for the installation of the wheel, caliper has been loosened off and the axle should slide in nicely. If there's any resistance, uh, best case, uh, to do, the best thing to do in this case would be to take a file and slightly file down the ax or the, uh, where the axle fits here in the dropout. Um, you may need a little bit of uh, filing just to get off uh, if the paint is a little thick. Um, these should be a 10 millimeter spacing. You can check this with an Allen key. This should drop, uh, fit in the dropout nicely there. If there's any resistance here with the axle, you want to make sure that you file it down so the, the wheel slides in and out. You don't want to be hammering anything in, you don't want it to be forced in. Uh, it can put stress on the axles and when you tighten everything down, it could cause troubles in the future. So to uh, be clear, just want to do a, a quick file down. I noticed it was a little sticky here on the one side. So I'll just take a minute just to file down any of the little paint chips that are just sticking out a little bit. So that when I go to put the wheel in, and just slides right in. Perfect. Wonderful. Okay. So once the wheel is sitting in the dropouts nicely, we'll just torque those down. Um, 20 to 30 newton meters should do it. 20 to 30, uh, sorry, foot pounds uh, should be about right. Um, don't want to over tighten these, uh, but again, firm. They don't need any special treatment here, just like any old, uh, any regular axle. Um, again, the uh, cable should be facing up with the 90 degree bend here with the notch that was in the axle and the axle comes with plastic covers for both sides of the axle. Again, we'll tighten those down first. So, I'm just going to reach for the old wrench -a -roo. Lined it up, it's sitting flush.
then we can go ahead and line up that caliber. Alright, so once again we have the lock washer on the inside, you can feel it, uh, you won't be able to feel it sticking out with the axle properly in the dropouts, everything should be flush, the wheels should be aligned straight in the dropouts here, and everything should be tucked up as high as it'll go, and then we've uh, torqued down the locking bolts and we've placed on our plastic covers.